some technical troubles we have been having last time about uh, uh, the commutation algebra of S of SO 3 1. So, uh, let me write down the algebra first, because that is the most crucial thing to worry about. So, our problems arose because we used a slightly unusual convention and basically what we adopted was what you would call Hermitian convention and this is non-standard. in uh, quantum field theory and the other one is a mixed one, Hermitian and anti-Hermitian. So, let me here quote Jackson, because that is a standard textbook and even if I have made various errors of sign, I do not think there will be errors there. So, Jackson's convention is that with everything real S i S j equal to epsilon, everything is real here. So, there are no i's at all. Okay. And therefore, it is automatically, uh, well, so it is, yeah, I am sorry. So, I have to correct this. So, first there is Jackson has this, which is all real and therefore, actually not Hermitian. So, the rotation matrices are anti-symmetric okay, and so, he uses S, S transpose equal to minus S, that is how his rotation matrices are and so, he has S k and then S j, S i, S i k j or epsilon i j k k k and k i k j equal to minus sign epsilon i j k s k. Now, to recover our notation from this, which was Hermitian, we need to do the following we defined j to be equal to i times s. Okay. Basically, this is what we did. This makes everything Hermitian, because the k's are symmetric, they were just 1 minus 1 on, uh, on the in the 0 row and column. And the rotation matrices were anti-symmetric, but now if you multiply by i, then they become Hermitian. So, this whole notation becomes Hermitian and in this case, I get uh, so it requires you to put supply i's everywhere. This we can see because I put a minus sign on the left side here and split that minus sign as i and i. So, it will convert both of these into j, but now I have a minus sign here. I split it into again i and i, leave one i in front and other i is absorbed by this to become j. In the next line, I supply only an i. First line I supply a minus sign, second line I supply an i i times s will become j and here no change except that the i will sit in front and finally, in the last line I supply nothing, but I split the minus sign into i and i 
and put 1 i into s. So, it will just become equal to k i k j equal to i epsilon i j k s k. Now, if I did this, I got into trouble. So, after this, if I do j plus i k, j minus i k, it does not work. But the thing that does work is the uh, mixed Hermitian and anti Hermitian formalism followed in quantum field theory literature. Yes, what did I write? Oh, I have to write j. In the mixed Hermitian anti Hermitian formalism, k's are actually anti Hermitian. So, we will not try to write any matrix representation, but I will just say that in this case, the j are Hermitian, but k are anti Hermitian. And this you can find in Weinberg quantum field theory volume 1. Okay. In this case, the commutation relations are the way I flipped the sign suddenly last time, but you can be sure that if you use this convention, then you get this algebra j i j j equal to i epsilon i j k j k and j k. So, let us remember that we will always write in order to not get lost rotation rotation produces a rotation and then act with rotation on a boost that produces a boost So, that is the second line here j k produces i epsilon i j k k k, but the third line which is k k or that is k i k j in this case turns out to be equal to minus i epsilon i j k j k two boosts leads to a rotation, but with a minus sign. I believe that you can get this and this mixed Hermitian anti Hermitian notation if you multiply also the k by an i. Okay. So, j as here j equal to i times Jackson's s. Jackson uses everything real, so at least that is very simple to follow. Uh, and the real matrices are multiplied out with nothing left to imagination. So, you can check everything, but also make the k nu here i times k of left side. Okay. So, if you do this then because the k were just 0 1 1 0 1 1 type of things, if you multiply by an overall i they become anti Hermitian they were symmetric to begin with. So, they become uh, anti Hermitian. So, that then tallies with this and I think this is the algebra you will get and that you can also quickly see if you supply i here. So, supply an overall minus sign that will make it i and i and then put the minus sign here which will remove this minus sign, but then you need to put an i to make this into j which will require you to put minus i in front. Okay. So, this and this tally and this is what the this is the notation we will follow. So, in this notation we then introduce well I just want to rely on my general argument that if you have rotation in a plane and in another plane, if the planes do not share any axes, then these rotations are independent, they will commute. 
but if they share one axis then that common axis goes away and you get a rotation in the only the third direction. So, if you do x y y z then the y drops out and you get an x z rotation. So, if you have 0 1 0 2 which are two boosts then you get a 1 2 rotation. How to imagine it probably requires you to I mean firstly you can do it with S O n instead of S O 3 1 and then try to, but that is the simplest uh, way to think about it and that you can check algebraically by doing this or by uh, taking some object and doing infinitesimal rotations x z rotation, z y rotation will leave behind an x y rotation that is what the commutation does. Okay. In the mixed notation which is what we will stick to because it is standard in quantum field theory. We now introduce this A i equal to one half J i plus i k i. Now, this gets a little confusing in some sense, but let me just first write it and introduce B i to be equal to one half times J i times minus k i. We note that this way then the A and B are Hermitian because k is anti Hermitian, but multiplied by an i and j is Hermitian to begin with. Now, if you work out <coughs> that the A i will produce i epsilon i j k a k and uh, we did this last time except that the only thing was last time I was writing k j commutator and not j k commutator. So, there is a sign change, but otherwise it is the same. Okay. So, this we have checked last time provided the we adopted this convention make defining a to be j plus i k and then I suddenly switch to writing this algebra. So, then it works out correctly. Okay. So, you can check this and similarly that the B's do the same thing. And the most beautiful part of it is that they mutually do not interfere A with B is 0. Okay. So, as a result <coughs> the S O 3 1 is equivalent to S u 2 cross S u 2 but with complexification so as algebras okay So, you can see what has happened the j, j is equal to i times the real rotations s of uh, Jackson. So, this is imaginary the k was i times the real k's, but we put i times that. So, we retain essentially a real piece here and a complex imaginary piece here. So, this is intrinsically a complex algebra created and that is when it resembles this S u 2 algebra. So, it is a sort of a pseudo trick it is not real in isomorphism in the full group sense, but certainly as algebras 
they are isomorphic it looks the same. Once it looks the same we can deploy all the tricks that we use for finding the representations of this which is as you know the raising and lowering operators. SO31 in the form J A comma J B where A vector square will be equal to J A into J A plus 1 and B vector square will be j b into j b plus 1 etcetera. Okay. Because each one just became a and b individually is like looks resembles an SU 2 algebra. So, this raising lowering trick will work and you can apply the same arguments and you will find representations that go from minus j to plus j. Uh, so, with vectors now from the point of view of physics the uh, representation although it is classified by this what really we observe uh, we can for any massive particle we can always go to its rest frame we can boost ourselves into its rest frame. So, for massive particles we only need to worry about its rotations. So, physical application in the rest frame of the particle in which case it will be the j really which happens to be equal to a plus b right because we defined a and b like this. So, if you add then you get a plus b uh, when then you get j back. So, j is equal to a plus b is sufficient to classify the representations. To, uh, to list the representation vectors. So, rotations alone are enough to uh, give you the required basis vectors and then you can find the wave function in any other frame of reference simply by boosting by applying a boost which will be exponential of uh, this a plus b. So, And here is where the mischief enters. You can write theta a or theta i j i and plus i, I am sorry, u equal to exponent i times 
first let us write theta a i a i uh, right plus i theta b i times b i or call this something else uh, we have been writing. So, call it j and put this k. So, we have six parameters theta a 1 to 3 theta b 1 to 3 j and k equal to 1 to 3 uh, and boost means boost k happens to be equal to a minus b divided by i so if you want pure boost then you adjust you want uh, a minus b so theta b is equal to minus of theta a j you choose the parameters to exactly equal then you will be carrying out a boost so that is one thing the two important comments now are that one is about uh, i hope i don't forget telling them one is about non hermeticity of this the other is more importantly that so properties of such reps one is that we do want space inversion to be part of our symmetries if you want space inversion to be part of our symmetries then we can see that under space inversion j goes to itself j is a pseudo vector remember so it is like x y rotation but if you flip sign of both x and y then it will not change so space inversion means that x go to minus x then j goes to j sometimes because it is called pseudo vector or note that j x y will remain j x y under both x and y changing signs the if you flip both the planes then it remains the same both, both the axes but k will go to minus k because it is a space time boost and time axis you are not changing so only the space axis space part changes and what this means is that you are forced to <coughs> take a j a equal to j b so if you want this to happen uh, under this a and b get exchanged right because a is j plus k b is j minus i k i doesn't even matter the point is that j parts remain same but k parts change sign so under space inversion a and b get exchanged
thus any realistic particle massive particles where we can demand demand this well actually we need not say so all particles that obey space inversion must have j a equal to j b the highest weight has to be same right because otherwise the representation will remain imbalanced where had we written some kind of j a j b yeah this thing a representation like j a j b where one of them runs over let us say minus 5 to plus 5 but other one only minus 3 to plus 3 under space flip they will get exchanged. So, that cannot happen unless j a is equal to j b. So, you are forced to have j a equal to j b. Here the interesting historical fact is that the neutrino in 1956 was realized to be purely left handed and completely massless. So, for massless particle uh, actually you can get away with using only j a or only j b and not the other one. Thought to be massless in 1956 weak interactions were found to be involve only left chiral neutrinos. or right chiral anti neutrinos. So, you could only use either J A or J B description without invoking both, because you did not need the sum J there, you did not have this requirement of A and B getting exchanged and it was sufficient to use J A comma J B equal to one half zero. <coughs> representation of the group. Firstly, the do, two did not need to be equal and one of them you just said 0, one of them is enough, because there are only two spin states, either rotating uh, either. So, it is <coughs> spin and momentum gets correlated, if it is going this way then it has to be counterclockwise, it is coming towards you then it has to be clockwise. So, either it is going away from you or towards you and there are only two spin states, you cannot have anti neutrino going uh, being left chiral. <coughs> so, it was sufficient to use this. This has <coughs> now changed as of year 2000 or so. We now know that neutrinos have a tiny little mass. So, this description is still mostly valid, but the chances are that there is the other half present 0 plus half. And also the possibility that the neutrino is quote a Majorana particle, which is a real representation. So, I hope to do it separately, but this is just to say that when you impose parity, then A B get exchanged and you are forced to have J equal to J B, but if there is no parity, if there is actually for some reason in nature parity violation, which was a huge shock to everyone that weak interactions had no right handed neutrinos, no right chiral and which is true till date. At least the weak forces 
do not see the right chiral neutrinos. We do see slight mass to the neutrino which probably means there is a right handed component, but the, that right handed component does not enter the weak force that much is certainly true. So, it, it was sufficient to use this and the theory was has only C p invariance but no individual p separately. Okay. So, if you perform a p transformation you will get a right chiral neutrino, but then you should do a charge conjugation as well and make it into anti neutrino then the physics would be fine that is what is observed in nature. So, it was claimed that we I mean this is still true till date it is true although the neutrinos are massive the weak interactions are only C p invariant and not p or c invariant. Now, the other comment so one was about this the other is about I said uh, property somewhere right yes. So, one property is this the second property is also interesting is that we only get uh, the representations are not unitary. Which are finite dimensional are not unitary. because the group is pseudo S u 2 cross S u 2. If you had a strictly compact group S u 2, then it would have been the representations would be finite dimensional and unitary like we proved in the uh, using Schur's lemma. But in this case exponential i times theta a let me write this notation theta a dot j a plus i theta b dot j b uh, dot b which can be go into something equivalently into i times some theta dot j and minus omega dot k right that is what it would become because uh, if we put a equal to sorry so let us just take look. So, so if we put a equal to j plus so there is no i here. So, a will have j plus i k so that i times this i will make it only k so there will be no i here it will be like this with theta and omega both real, okay. but k anti Hermitian. So, here uh, okay, let us work out. So, if we have theta a i times j i plus i k i plus theta b i into j i minus i k i then we get theta a i plus theta b i times j i and plus i times yeah uh, theta a i minus theta b i times k i. 
So, if you had boosted with i in front, then this i will drop out and this will be a real parameter, theta and omega are real parameters. But this is an anti Hermitian operator. So, what we find is that this is no longer a unitary matrix actually and that is why you will not get, so it is not actually unitary, the pseudo unitary and k dagger equal to k, uh, minus k. So, the representations are finite dimensional, but intrinsically complex. Now, why this was important was because the uh, complexity of description of electron having to, so you remember the Pauli matrices are intrinsically complex. You can have 1, 1, 1, minus 1, but you have to have minus i, i. You cannot escape the complexification of the representation because of the fact ultimately that it has to do with the Lorentz group and you are trying to get a finite dimensional representation of a otherwise non-compact group. So, this is no surprise because actually accords with non-compact nature of SO31, right, because the boosts are not compact. You can have, uh, you can boost arbitrarily close to speed of light, but you cannot actually hit the speed of light. So, it remains a non compact. The boosts are form non compact one parameter subgroups. 